Hey, Pascal here, and that's a shot from Banty K from his Cambodia video. And I really like the colors. And yeah, that's a shot that I did. So how can I get his colors into that shot? How can I copy his look? I will show you in this video. So in this video I will teach you how you can easily copy the looks of your favorite creators here on YouTube but also Instagram or wherever you see it. You just need to make a screenshot from it and then it already works. It's a kind of an easy process actually but you need to develop a bit of an understanding of how it works. So probably watch the video twice and play a bit around for you when you want to learn it. But first let me know who are your favorite travel video creators both here on YouTube but also on Instagram. My personal favorites are definitely Ben TK. I really love his transitions but also beautiful destinations. It's just amazing what this company does there. So just check them out and yeah please leave it in the comments below what is your favorite creator. But let's get on the computer directly and I will show you how you can easily copy looks. So I already did some preparations here. So this is the shot that I did with a Mavic 2 Pro. See the boat here, a lot of water and some trees. And I already, already did a like basic color correction. It's not perfect probably, but for the look that we want to create here, we don't need to have it like 100% perfect. So that's before, it's D-Log and that's after. And I also inserted a screenshot of Case video here so that I can see the colors and I activated my scopes here because scopes are very important if you want to copy looks because scopes tell you exactly where you are. Of course with the tools that I show you you can also just eyeball it but when you have scopes it makes it a bit easier to see everything. So let's get started here. Um, at first I want to see how the exposure of the shot is. So what I can see here is that his blue areas, so or teal areas like the water here, are somewhere between uh, let's say 20 and 50 IRE. So at first I want to make sure that my blue levels are at around the same spot and now I can see they are clearly above 50 here, or not, not above, like clearly under 50, sorry. So I will add another color wheels and I want to bring them down. So these are the mid-tones. So I have to bring the mid-tones a bit down. I would say that's somewhat okay. Maybe we have to do some more adjustments to it later but that will do it for now. And what I also want to do, like let's turn it on again and see where the rest is. Like the rest, uh, Let's see the lowest point here, like this is his darkest point. There is something above it, but that doesn't count so much. So here I see that I'm a bit darker than he is. And that's why I want to lift my shadows a little bit. So I simply go into shadows in my three-way color correction and I raise them to around that amount that he has here, so around there. Yeah, that looks good, but also my midtones got a bit up because of that, so I have to lower my midtones now a bit more again. Then my shadows go a bit down again, so I have to bring them up a bit again now. And uh, midtones again a little bit. Okay, and I would say that's around good. The reason why we do exposure at first is because the human eye recognizes exposure more than everything else. So let's say you have a contrast between bright and dark, then this contrast will be seen more as a contrast between colors, so between teal and orange, for example. Our eyes are more drawn to that. That's why I do that as, at first. And then the next step, what I want to do is I want to apply a lot because what you can see right now here in the vector scope is that a lot of my colors go in that direction, in the teal direction already, which is not bad because when I turn that on here, you see that his colors also go in the same direction, it's just not as far. That means that it has less saturation shots. So basically how the vector scope works is that the closer it is to the midpoint everything, the less saturation it has. 
And here in my shot, you can see it clearly has a lot more saturation right now. So everything goes more to the edge of the circle. So what you can also see is that here it has some like yellow greenish stuff that goes away and then something goes in the direction of blue purple here. So in Venti case shot, I can clearly see that we only have like one part that goes into the red area and one part that goes into the teal area. So I want to go into the same areas. I want to create a strong color contrast. That's why I apply a LUT and that's my Tange Green LUT. That's my standard LUT that I usually use in most of my videos. And it's part of a LUT pack of the Tange LUT pack. So if you like the looks of my travel videos, then you will find the link to it in the description and you can buy it in my shop that also supports my channel if you like the videos. Now you can already see that the colors are already a lot more like Benti K. So if we compare that, Benti K of course is a lot more desaturated and so on, but I turn it off again, it already looks a lot more like that. And you, we can also see that here in the vector scope. So the blue here of my water already goes more into the direction that Benti K has and that also is more reddish like the trees. So, but it's of course not the same. So the next obvious thing that I see in this shot is that it's more desaturated. So I also want to desaturate mine. So I go into the color wheels in the master and I will bring the master, the saturation down until it looks somewhat the same. Then I turn it on again and I see, okay, I'm at around the same saturation or maybe I can saturate it a little bit more. Okay, let's see again. That's why the vector scope and the waveform monitor and so on, like all your scopes, they are so good, they are so helpful. They really help a lot to identify the exposure levels and colors and the saturation and so on. That's why I use them a lot. But now what I can see is that the blue of my ocean is a bit more greenish than the one from Ben TK. So I need to make the blue of my ocean a bit more blue. And I simply do that by adding the U and saturation curves. Then I drag onto that pointer here on the pipette tool. And I simply draw a circle here. And then it automatically creates this three points. And then when I bring the middle point down, then it shifts more in the direction of blue. So now you can see that here actually in the vector scope. It points more to blue now. Let's see if that matches to band decay. Uh, maybe a little bit more, but only a very tiny bit. His line goes a bit more to outside, so I could still add a little bit more saturation to my shot. Uh, let's add a little bit more. Okay, not too much. And then we can clearly see that the water color at least looks quite similar now, but it is still a bit too bright, I would say. So what I can also do then, I can simply go to the U versus Luma here and at the points, like I basically copy the points here, like going at around the same level and I bring also that down. And now you can see how my water gets darker. That's cool, right? <laughs> I really love the U and saturation tools. So that's so easy. And now we can see, yeah, the water looks pretty much the same already. And now we have the other part here, like here is still the trees. And when I watch in Benty K's video, you can see that they point a bit more to red than in mine. Like here they are on the skin tone indicator line. So this here is a bit more yellowish, but I want to have it like Ben TK. So I want to have it a bit more reddish and it's actually quite simple. What I do simply here is I have the blue areas. So I do, I add one point here. Of course you could also use the pipette tool again, but let's make it simple here because it's basically two colors. We have the blue te uh, teal tone, but uh, we have the blue and teal tone and we have the a bit warmer like reddish tones. So I simply click here into the purple area because we don't have purple, but like I can now 
affect all the uh, the hues between this point and this point by simply adding one here and bringing that up. By bringing that up, like look in the, in the vector scope here, by bringing that up, I bring it to the reds. So that maybe a little bit more. Let's compare that. Uh, maybe a little bit less red, but it already goes in a good direction. Okay. Yeah, now we can see here that it goes in the same direction, but it's too saturated in my shot. So what I simply do is I have hue versus saturation here. So I make one point here and one point here, like basically copying these two points. And then I can simply bring the saturation of this part down. Let's see how that fits. Should bring it down even more actually. Like I, I just saw that here in the vector scope again. Let's bring it down even more. And there you have it. Now it looks very similar. Like here you see when I now turn the clip off the vector scope only changes a little bit. Uh, maybe I need a little bit more red in it. Just a tiny bit more red. Okay. Doesn't look perfect to me. I would say in the trees here, his trees are a bit brighter than my trees. So I'll go back to U versus Luma and also add a point here and just bring the Luma of the trees a little bit up. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks very similar, yeah. That's around the look that I want. And now of course, like you see, he has the cinematic black bars here. So that, I, I don't know, like it, it's not really color grading, but it always gives it this finishing touch. I'm, I have a plugin for that where I blend them in, but you can actually just use the letterbox effect here. Of course, not in that clip but on here and there I just set it to 235 to one maybe I just offset a bit and there we have it like very similar colors I would say he has a little bit more green still in the trees here it's pretty hard to bring that in, to be honest. Like there is some possibilities with curves or you could also mask it out and then bring it in different uh, levels. But that's a bit too complicated here for that video. But I think you really got the idea already how it works. So basically use the scopes all the time. The scopes are very important. They are a good indicator that shows you where you are, where your exposure sits, where your saturation is and what hues you use so that you can easily use exactly the same color tones and the same exposure and contrast levels as your favorite creator. But of course, just by watching this video, your color grading skills or like copying look skills, copying look skills, yeah, <laughs> that was a good one, will not get better. So you really have to do it. You have to train your eye and you have to learn how to use the scopes and so on what I showed here. So what you should do now, just go to the page or the videos or photos, whatever you want of your favorite creators and just make some screenshots of it. And after that, just go into your final editing software and try to copy that look using scopes, using U saturation curves, the three-way color correction, and maybe also curves. It's always good to learn that as well. And of course, if you want to further enhance your travel videos, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notifications button right now, because I publish a new tutorial every Sunday. And I also ha already have a lot of other tutorials on my channel. So don't forget to check them out and see you in the next video.